Alarmingly, 2.1 million tenants are either struggling or behind with their rent. Everyone wants a decent place to live and one that doesn't eat up all their income. England has become the worst place to find a home. New figures suggest more than one third of young people are spending much higher proportions of their income on rent. Britain has a shortfall of over four million homes, the worst record in Europe. Those unable to cope with these escalating costs are forced to seek cheaper accommodations, after ending up in substandard housing with issues like dampness and mould. Because the mould is everywhere. I've had to move the furniture around so that the, the water doesn't land on the bed. This is all, this is all mould? This is all mould. As yet, many individuals are simply unable to find affordable housing, contributing to the alarming surge in homelessness. Over 100,000 families in England, including more than 125,000 children, reside in temporary accommodations, marking the highest figure in two decades. And this is all happening while the cost of living is skyrocketing. Prices for everyday things are rising, and so are energy bills. It's stressing me I've, because I've, 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 I've just been diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and, and it's worrying me and everything is making me depressed. I, I woke up one morning, well, several mornings, and um, Michelle, my partner, has actually been in tears because we've had hardly anything in a couple of fridge. That's why I have to keep burning these up. Oh, I'm sorry. It must be such a worry for you. I'm really sorry. So, how did the UK get to this point? What created the housing crisis? And is there any hope for the United Kingdom? This is the story of the United Kingdom's housing disaster. While many might believe that Britain's housing shortage became pronounced only in the latter part of the post-war era, its origins can actually be traced to the early aftermath of the war. The vast devastation left in the wake of the war created an immediate need for reconstruction, with housing being a primary concern. These little prefabricated homes were Britain's answer to the housing crisis after the Second World War. Three quarters of a million homes had been destroyed. Policy decisions from this period were pivotal in shaping the trajectory of the housing sector. A landmark policy change came with the Town and Country Planning Act of 1947. Before this legislation, between 1856 and 1939, house building rates in England and Wales had been on a steady incline, growing by approximately 2% each year. This growth was a testament to the market's ability to meet the needs of a growing population and the urbanization trend. However, the post-1947 era saw a decline in these building rates. From 1947 to 2019, the annual growth rate plummeted to just 1.2%. This housing development slowdown had far-reaching implications. As the supply of houses lagged behind demand, property prices surged. Home ownership, once within reach for many, transformed into a distant dream. The rental market wasn't immune either, as rental prices soared. This supply and demand problem has evolved into the housing crisis the UK grapples with today. No one should have to live in conditions like this. But in this wet, cold, mould-infested flat live Franzoy and her two young sons. As securing an affordable, quality home is a losing battle most British residents face. Today, the vast majority in the United Kingdom find it challenging to find and retain a home that's decent, affordable, and meets their needs. For example, rents in the private sector are surging at an astronomical rate, and evictions have become a distressing norm. So I'm still shaking, um, but I've had my eviction notice, and knowing that my baby's literally going to be a month old, and we've got nowhere to go. A recent poll by YouGov for Shelter underscores the severity of the situation. A staggering 55% of private renters in England reported rent hikes in the past year, burdening their financial stability. Alarmingly, 2.1 million tenants are either struggling or behind with their rent, and those unable to cope with these escalating costs are forced to seek cheaper accommodations often ending up in substandard housing with issues like dampness and mould. Worse yet, 
Many individuals are simply unable to find affordable housing, contributing to the alarming surge in homelessness. In the past, renting was often a short-term plan before buying a house, or for people who wanted the freedom to move easily. But now, more people are renting for a long time because they can't afford to buy a home. The number of renters has more than doubled since the late 1980s. Almost 2 million renters get some help from the government to pay their rent. This help is called the Local Housing Allowance. It's supposed to make sure that people can afford at least some of the rental places in their area. But a study by the Chartered Institute of Housing and Shelter showed that fewer than one in five private rental properties in England were priced within the limits of the local housing allowance rates, essentially making the majority of available housing unaffordable for individuals depending on this government support. This means a lot of houses and apartments are just too expensive for many people, even with the government supporting them. Young, single individuals who are living on their own are especially affected. They are stuck because the rent prices are much higher than the financial help they receive. Owning a home is getting harder in the UK. For many, what used to be a dream is now out of their reach. Mortgage costs, the money people need to pay back to the bank every month for their home loans, have gone up a lot. Just last year, it was at 1.5%, but by August, it shot up to 5.25%. Because of this, a lot of families are finding it hard to make these payments. The Financial Conduct Authority, a big financial watchdog in the UK, has shared some worrying numbers. Around 200,000 families were already struggling to pay their mortgages by the middle of 2022. Looking ahead, another 570,000 families might not be able to make their payments over the next two years. This is because the cost of their homes takes up more than 30% of the money they bring in. On top of this, there's a big shortage of affordable homes to rent. Over 2 million homes that used to be available for cheaper rents are gone because of a policy called the Right to Buy scheme. This means many families with not a lot of money can't find affordable places to live. Because of high housing costs, over 3 million people are living in poverty, and one in every five children lives in homes that are too small, too expensive, or not good enough. I can't always get what I want to eat because mum doesn't have that type of money. Two, three, four, five pieces of bread. <coughs> Nothing. So this isn't just about the high cost of living. The housing problem has been growing for years. The big question is, where did this problem start and what can be done to fix it so that families can afford to have a home again? In the past 10 years, finding a home in the UK has become a big challenge. We have more people, but not enough houses being built. This problem is felt the most in towns and cities, where almost half of them don't have enough homes for everyone. In places like London and nearby areas like Barking and Dagenham, it's even harder to find a place to live because of the fast-growing numbers of people moving to those areas. This isn't the same everywhere, though. Different areas face different challenges. The northwest and some towns in the southeast are feeling the pinch. Big cities like Manchester and Birmingham are also caught up in this housing crisis, as more people are moving there than houses can be built. And here's something surprising. Only 1% of homes are empty. While it might seem like a good thing at first, it actually makes finding an affordable home tougher. With so few homes, landlords can charge higher rent because people don't have many other options. That's why, over the last decade, the price of homes has jumped up by more than half in most parts of England. So, what does this mean for people who don't earn a lot? Well, they're in a tight spot. The Office of National Statistics tells us that only two regions in England offer genuinely affordable housing for local renters who make minimum income. With many families in the UK struggling with money, there's never been a bigger need for purpose-built affordable homes. Yet, a report by the Centre for Cities reveals a shocking deficit of 4.3 million homes. Why? Because they were never built. Right now, the government has a plan to build 300,000 homes every year. But even with this plan, it would take about 50 years to have enough homes for everyone. 
To solve the housing problem fast, the UK would need to build 442,000 homes every year for 25 years, or 654,000 homes every year for 10 years. And that's just in England alone. But experts worry that even if this ambitious target were to be achieved, it might not fix the problem. Because more and more people are coming to live and work in the UK every year. House prices in the UK have gone up a lot since the mid-1990s. At the same time, more people have been moving to the UK from other countries. Some people think that having more people come to live in the country is making the housing problem worse. But it's not that simple. Research shows that the effect of more people moving to the UK can be different in different places. In some areas, when more immigrants come, house prices actually go down. This can happen when the people who already live there decide to move somewhere else. Some people worry that when more people come to the UK, there will be fewer jobs and lower pay for everyone else. But economists argue that immigration actually has positive benefits and that immigrants often help the economy, as they're usually young and work hard and they pay taxes. That means they give more money to the government than they take out. However, the UK already doesn't have enough homes for its own citizens. So when more people come to live in the country, it can make the problem worse. A lot of immigrants rent their homes, and with more people looking to rent, the prices can go up because there aren't enough homes available. Furthermore, recent data from the Office for National Statistics has highlighted an interesting trend. They predict that for the next 25 years, up until 2043, a big part of the growth in the number of households in the UK will be because of immigration. And even if the number of people coming to England were cut in half, immigrants would still make up about 57% of the increase in new households. Now, let's talk about rent. According to Homelet, people in the UK, on average, pay £1,276 every month for rent. But if we don't count London, where rent is much higher, the average drops to £1,061 each month. According to this Homelet table, it's evident that the rate of rent increase varies significantly across different regions. Take Scotland, for example, where rent has jumped by 13.34% in just one year. Now, people there pay, on average, £977 every month. But in the northeast of England, things are different. It has the cheapest rent in the country, costing an average of just £668 each month. Rent prices change for a lot of reasons, like how many people want to live in an area, how the local economy is doing, and how many houses are available. So, while more people moving to the UK can make finding a house or apartment more competitive and expensive, other things like the local job market and how many homes are built also play a big role. The UK has seen significant levels of net immigration in the past, including instances such as Irish immigration at the turn of the century and immigration from Commonwealth countries in the 1950s and 60s. Interestingly, these historical periods did not result in housing crises or constant house price increases. In those decades, the UK housing market was more flexible and able to increase supply in response to the rising population. However, in recent years, the UK has struggled to meet the demand for housing. Estimates suggest that the UK must construct at least 250,000 new houses annually to accommodate changing demographics and a growing population. Yet, this task would be complicated by factors such as limited free land and resistance to construction on greenfield sites. Some propose building more properties through innovative means like mini-pods on brownfield sites. Still, these projects often encounter opposition at the local level. But then again, even if the UK could build the required number of houses, it would raise concerns over population density and congestion, placing additional strain on transportation infrastructure. While most experts argue that migrants are not the primary cause of the UK's housing crisis, it is evident that they have contributed to an imbalance between supply and demand resulting in increased house prices in various cities. In fact, Migration Watch UK suggests that to urgently ease congestion, housing pressures and environmental strains, 
migration into the UK should be reduced to less than 100,000 per year. They also caution that if current immigration levels continue, the UK would need to construct between 15 and 18 additional cities the size of Birmingham to accommodate the growing population, which could reach between 83 and 87 million by 2046.